Hello everyone, this is Dell, and today's lesson is all about tuning. And so what I've done is pulled up an online tone generator. I pulled it up twice, so here I have it in the 440 hertz, and in this one I have it in 432. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to play these two pitches back to back so you can hear the difference between the two. The 440 is what we currently tune to now, so that means all A's. Um, above middle C sound 440 hertz or 440 cycles per second. Then all other notes on the piano are tuned off of that one note. Same thing with every other instrument. Okay, so here's 440 hertz. I'm going to go back and play them back to back without talking in between. Okay, you should have noticed that the 432 hertz is slightly lower. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the two together. Oh, what fun we're about ready to have. All right. You'll know as you're hearing it, you're gonna, it's not going to sound good when I play the two together. You're going to hear what we call beating, which means you're actually going to feel it in your body probably, especially if you turn your volume up, but I don't recommend you doing that. Um, the faster the beats are, the more out of tune it is. The closer the beats are, the closer in tune it really is. So... We'll get the 440 started. Add the 432. Do you hear that? Wah, 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 wah. Okay, if you'll notice the beating was really fast. Wah, 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 wah. That's what we call beating. That means the two notes are competing with one another and creating that beating effect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this to 438 and see if you can hear the difference between the 438 and the 432. Remember the beating pattern was wah 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 was pretty fast. Wah 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 Okay, if you notice that the beating pattern was slower, good. That means that they're slightly more in tune with one another than they were before. So we're going the right direction. Now I'm going to take it down to 435. Yeah, why not? Let's just go down to 436. We're going down in increments of two. Can you hear the, let's play the 436 first. Add the 432. Wah, 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 what you're hearing. Okay, and you will notice we're getting closer and closer and closer to being in tune because the beating is getting slower. So we're going to change this to 434 now. Let's get it going. Wow, 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 wow. It actually creates a kind of a beat. Um, 434 and 432 are really close. You'll notice the beating pattern was quite a bit slower. Now let's just lower this by 1 to 433. So we're going to compare 433 to 432. Okay, you will notice that those two are really, really close, very close to, to each other. Um, so that is how you can tell something is getting closer to being in tune because the beating is slower. As musicians, 
Excuse me, my phone thinks I'm talking to it, so we must shut it off. Okay. Um, so as the beats get slower, then you know you're getting closer to being in tune. So let's change this to 432. 432. You hear no beats at all. So you know that this is perfectly in tune. Okay, so instrumentalists, what we do is when we're trying to to play and tune a note, a lot of times, I'll just pick this one. I don't remember which one I have, but let's put this at 436. Okay, so the oboist gives me this A, 432, and I join in here. You can hear the beating. You know it's out of tune. So what a lot of times people will do is they will play a note, stop, the other person will play the note, ah, that sharp, you need to pull your instrument out. So I'm a clarinet player, so I'm going to pull out in the middle of the instrument. So I'm going to pull out a little bit, so I'm going to, maybe this will be enough, we'll find out. So the oboist is going to give you my A again, and I'm going to join along. Ah, I'm getting closer, but I'm not quite there. But I can't tell whether I'm sharp or flat. So the oboist is going to play. Whoops. Still have this one going. So let the oboist player is going to play. Okay. So I know when you play one pitch and stop, and then you play another pitch and stop, you can tell... The second pitch was still slightly sharp. So as a musician, I'm going to pull out a little bit more, and I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to need to pull down that much. So the oboe player will play the A, then I'll play my A. Voila, it's perfectly in tune, and we're all happy campers. Okay, so that is how an ensemble tunes. Or, you know, if you're a, a clarinet player, or flutist, or violinist, you're going to tune to a piano. You're going to play a note, piano's going to play a note, and you want to make sure that you're, that you're not hearing that beating pattern that's going on between the notes. So, in listening to this video, when you hear people talking about beating and things out of tune, this is what it sounds like. So, even if it's pitches that you cannot hear, they're lower than what's on the keyboard or higher than what's on the keyboard, your body can still hear them. So... There's a lot of things that are floating around out there in the atmosphere that are not in tune with our bodies. And our bodies are going to react the same way as we react, we react when we hear these pitches too. So um, we'll leave that discussion for another video. So thank you for joining me today.